Here we're going to continue with our uh, trig inverse evaluations. And sometimes you have to take, say, the sine inverse of a trig function, like the cosine of negative pi over 3. If you get into this situation, the easiest thing to do is just evaluate this. And then you're back to the case one where you're just taking the sine inverse of some number. And so we're looking here at uh, really negative 60 degrees. And we know that the cosine is positive in the uh, fourth quadrant. And the, it's also 1 half. So we can say, all right, well, this is the sine inverse of uh, positive 1 half. All right, 60 degrees. And so now this is a fairly easy um, trig, uh, inverse function to evaluate because if it's, this is an angle, this equals theta, okay? And it's, theta, it's a theta in the first quadrant. How do we know that? Because the inverse functions of every positive argument are, is in the first quadrant, it's an angle in the first quadrant. And it's also the fact that the sine of uh, theta uh, equals uh, positive one half. Well, we know that the sine of 30 degrees is one half, and 30 degrees is in the first quadrant. So we say, you can run it up here, that this equals not 30 degrees. We generally use radian measure whenever we evaluate an inverse trig function. Okay, so the sine inverse, so the, essentially the sine inverse of the cosine of negative pi over three is positive pi over six. Uh, the next one I'm going to look at is kind of going to be the reverse of this. And let me erase this really quickly and get it all, I guess. And that is the tangent inverse of the tangent of pi. And you might say, oh, I know this. We know that the, you know, the inverse function negates the, the function. Therefore, I have to get pi. But uh, it's very tempting to write that, but it's not true. And here's why. Um, the tangent inverse is a defined for a special case of the tangent, and not just the tangent in general. So when we take the tangent inverse, we have to be a little careful. And to play it safe, just evaluate the tangent of pi. What is the tangent of pi? Well, see, this equals the tangent inverse. And if you remember your unit circle, you'll know that the tangent, of course, is sine over cosine. The sine of pi is 0, and cosine is negative 1. So it's 0. The tangent of, of pi is 0. We're not going to get pi. And what is the tangent inverse of 0? Well, if we, we remember our graph, it looks like this, doesn't it, the tangent inverse? This is pi over 2, and this is uh, minus pi over 2. And I hope my and so the tangent of 0, we can read right from the graph, equals 0. So it doesn't really equal pi, does it? It equals 0. The tangent inverse of the tangent of pi is actually 0. That's what you'll get if you put it in your calculator. And a lot of the reason we do these is so when we use our calculators in real life, we know what we're getting. This last one I'd like to do is a trig of a trig inverse function. And it's not even a common angle. but Let's take a look at this here. This is the sine of the, co um, the cotangent of negative 5. OK. All right. Sine inverse. Inver I'm sorry. Thank you very much. It's sine inverse. Oh, I want cotan inverse. I'm sorry. No, that's what I really I want sine. That's what I really wanted there. I'm sorry. I didn't put there. The sine of the cotan inverse of negative 5. OK, well, we, we have to find, I can, I, looking at this cotan inverse and saying, well, gee, I don't think that's going to be a common angle. I know it's an angle. In fact, we're going to say this is the sine of theta. And we're going to do, learn things about theta, OK? Well, one thing we know about theta, if you look at the graph of, and I'll quickly draw it, um, of the cotangent inverse, horizontal asymptote here, right? And you should learn all these graphs. My students do. All right. And if I look at, say, negative 5, I go out here, I go up here, here's my point. And I notice that theta is between pi over 2 and this is what this is right here, pi over 2 and pi. 
So theta is an angle that's greater than or equal to pi over 2 and less than or equal to pi. So it's an angle in the second quadrant. It's pi. a positive. Pi, sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. I knew I was going to make mistakes here. Between, so it's between pi over 2 and pi. So it, it's, an, it's an angle, in this positive angle in the second quadrant. We know the sine is positive in that quadrant. So one thing I know right away is the sine of theta, which is going to be our answer, is going to be a positive number. So I know that, and we're going to get a positive result. So how do I figure this out? Well, I, I look at this, I just take the phi, the absolute value of the argument, and I say, well, the cotan is five units, right? So I look at this thing, and it's the cotan. So that means that this is five over one, OK? And so this hypotenuse, using the Pythagorean theorem, must be 20, the square root of 26, OK? Because this squared plus this squared equals this squared. So you, know, you can just quickly figure it out. If you have two legs of a, a right triangle, then you can find the third side. And this is theta reference angle, let's say. This is the theta reference angle, okay? And so what we want to do is we find, want to find the sine of this angle. Once we know that, we've got it made. Well, that's easy. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's 1 over the square root of 26. And if you get out your calculator and figure this out, now when you put this cotan inverse in your calculator, you really have to evaluate it as pi over 2 minus the tan inverse of negative 5, and then take the sine of that, and you'll end up with 1 over the square root of 26. Or a little bit less than 1 fifth. There you go. <laughs> That's right, 1 